The streets of Detroit are home to a life and death struggle. We gangsters, thugs, monsters, our life, don't man. give a f about life. I lost a leg to this, man. Detroit's gangs and the guns they wield threaten the lives of kids who spend every day growing up in fear of other kids. I had a young girl over here on the ground. She's been shot in her side. This is where it went in it. This is where it came out. Coming in! Police, coming in! Police, police. Now, an elite police unit has been tasked with turning the tide in a war that's raged for decades. Once they see this, they tend to think twice. With aggressive tactics and unparalleled street smarts, they infiltrate a world of gangs, guns, and deadly consequences. You can't be perfect trying to control an imperfect world. Ask me on your back, don't mess it up. There's a whole lot of motherfuckers out here. The, the police, that's what we <laughs> think of. Don't let no guards down. We going in hot, we going in ready. Get him back, get out of here, get back. Bang it, bang it. Let me see the goddamn hands. Let's get out, let's get out, let's get something. I really need all of y'all. I really do. I need I need the whole gang unit. I mean, you guys have came in early, and we try to hold you on the back end. I know we working we working the mess out of you, but it is what it is. You know, don't don't come in thinking, okay, I'm gonna get an early Friday night a chance to go to the movie. You had to go to movie on Saturday uh, matinee. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being very professional. Just keep up the good work. Let's be careful. Let's go. I'm back to when y'all left, please, in one piece. Thank you. Detroit's first line of defense against gang violence is the police department's gang enforcement unit, AKA the gang squad. We hunt the hunters. We get them before they're able to do anything. That's the whole concept. What's up, gentlemen? The squad is a 70 officer force that employs deep intelligence gathering and aggressive street enforcement to penetrate the world of gang culture. Our main focus are gangs, guns, and drugs, preferably guns. In the wake of a recent gang shooting at a school bus stop, the squad is hitting the streets in full force, making street-to-street -street searches and traffic stops. And their aggressive tactics aren't always understood by the people they protect. We get harassed 24-7. Every day, though. Every day. Every day. And we ain't even violated. do nothing. We get our civil rights violated in Martin Detroit. King, <laughs> this ain't the place to be, people. Stay in New York, New Jersey, Canada, <laughs> Australia. <laughs> Don't, Don't, come Don't come to 313. If you get to the area code, you're doing something bad. They, for some reason, think uh, we don't have nothing better to do than just ride around and mess with people until they're a victim. Every day is different. No day is the same. You'll hear people say we want routine patrol. It's never routine. Put your hands, hands up. Put your hands, hands up. Put your hands up. My oh, man. At a gas station on Greenfield Road in northwest Detroit, officers Shooter, Pelly, and Hollywood stop a vehicle for what they suspect is an open intox violation, an open container of alcohol. Think about it. Trust the driver. What they discover is a much deadlier brew. Now, if you move and make any sudden move, your nose is going to be splattered all over your face. Block 2340, Cal. 25 round extended clip. The extended clip on the handgun suggests it's being carried for more than just personal protection. And this is how we avoided a shooting. You notice how long that uh, magazine was. That today was a hit day. They don't, you don't carry no gun that small with a magazine that long unless you're going to take somebody hey, out. Back to the car, it's full. You might hold on. Gun a day is a life save, just like an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's my MO. Detroit is a city of approximately 900,000 citizens, with one of the highest per capita murder rates in the U.S. It has also been hit harder by the economic downturn than any other major American city with a nearly 30% unemployment rate. Kids in Detroit are now at greater risk to gang violence than ever before. And the availability of guns has made it easy for hard times to turn tragic. June 30th, 2009.
911. Yes, I'm right here at the gas station on Warren and Southfield. Okay. I got a young girl over here on the ground. She's been shot in her side or, or her stomach or something. Okay, we no, don't move, baby. Don't Listen. move. I couldn't really feel the bullets go in, but it's just everything feel numb. But at the same time, you can feel a lot of pain. It hurts so bad, like pain you cannot control. She got it. She got shot in her abdomen and her arms. Okay, who else is? Was she the only person shot? No, it's a whole group of people, kids. It's a whole bunch of kids. Okay. Baby, be still. Be still. Don't okay. move. 17-year-old Tiara Dickerson was just one of seven teenagers hit by gunfire while waiting at a bus stop after school. It was just a lot of things going through my head. Like, I was thinking, like, I don't want to die, and I hope I make it, and what's going to happen. I hope the police hurry up and come. Chaos and confusion in the middle of the afternoon. At least seven people shot, five of them summer school students at the Cody Ninth Grade Academy in Detroit. At one point, the pain was so bad that I felt like I did want to die. But then I thought about my mom, my family, and everybody. So I decided to, well, try to stay strong. The attack sent all seven victims to the hospital, two in critical condition. And it lit off a firestorm in the local press. This is a case that ought to be symbolic to all of us because there were so many kids who were victimized at one time uh, in broad open daylight. The ruthless nature of the shooting and the young age of its victims suggests that this was a case for the gang squad. Detroit police quickly called on Sergeant Todd Eby to work with gang squad on the investigation. But some of the evidence that was at the scene were uh, ballistics, firearms evidence, like spent casings. Um, we had a videotape, a surveillance video from the gas station. Police now actively searching for that green van, and we're told surveillance cameras on the bank and the gas station at this intersection will help with this investigation. Those tapes are being reviewed right now. In a case with very little forensic evidence to work with, the security cams caught the entire incident in startling clarity. It's about 2.15 in the afternoon. It's sunny. This is the gas station parking lot. Just north of the gas station is... Uh, Cody Academy, where the, the kids went to school. From the left, you'll see two individuals run towards the bus stop armed with guns firing. We know that they're semi-automatics. We know that one's a 9mm and one's a 40 caliber. When the shooting begins, you can see the crowd scatter. Most run westbound. A few run south towards Warren. And uh, although you can't see everybody involved, you can clearly see two specific people uh, that are hit. The whole incident takes 10 seconds, and there's probably uh, about 15 shots that are fired during the course of that uh, brief period of time. From the videotape and eyewitness accounts, Sergeant Eby quickly confirmed the incident was gang-related and that the motive was revenge. One of these people that was uh, that was shot was a rival gang member, and uh, the other six people that were shot were, for lack of a better term, collateral damage. Now, Sergeant E.B. is teaming up with the Detroit Gang Squad to identify the shooters and hunt them down. We're headed to the gas station right now, and uh, Officer Dickford, who is a member of the Gang Squad, him and I are going to kind of reenact the, or reconstruct the crime scene. And, this man is an intelligence officer with the gang squad. Known for his sense of style, he goes by the code name GQ. To protect his identity, GQ's real name will not be revealed. So, G, it started over by this daycare. There's the two daycare workers saw them get dropped off. They knew something was suspicious. They came back right here, took off their T-shirts, wrapped them around their face, and then made a beeline towards that bus stop. Do you think that they were targeting just one person? We're pretty confident in saying that six of the people were unintended targets. The only thing they were guilty of doing that day was going to school and waiting at a bus stop. You know? What can Gang Squad do? You guys need to do what you normally do in these situations where you increase enforcement among the gang members. And uh, you know, at some point, somebody is going to tell us who did this. I don't believe for a minute that there's all these people out here at that time of day 
and these gang members don't know what happened or who did it. But clearly, people know. And I think uh, you guys do a good job of, uh, you know, putting pressure where pressure needs to be placed. And I think that's what needs to be done here. What, uh, As one of gang exactly squad's intelligence you... men, GQ's mission is to work the streets for inside information on the bus stop shooting. That means cultivating sources and keeping his identity as a cop low key. Sometimes, even working undercover. What it is is that you're going out here and you uh, mingling with the people, uh, people in society every day, and to gather information um, to curtail crime. Gathering intel from gang sources is an investigative skill few officers have. GQ's ability to get people on the street to trust him comes from a lifetime of experience. Being uh, raised and born on the west side of the city of Detroit, I know what it feels like to not have enough food. I know what it feels like to have my lights and gas shut off. I know what it feels like to have parents who are on drugs. One thing is just your attire and then the way that you talk. And then you got to know exactly where you are. You know, you're trying to get information from the west side of Detroit. You know that the west side is they look a certain way, they dress a certain way, because perception means a, a whole lot. You know, I've got maybe 50 or 60 sources out here, you know, so my reputation kind of speaks for itself. To GQ, sources are everything. But in neighborhoods like West Detroit, talking to the police can get you killed. GQ needs to find people vulnerable enough to spill what they know. We're going into the Southwest District and we're gonna gather some gang intel. They're just guys that have been arrested in the uh, precinct for various crimes. And based on their crimes, we're gonna ask some general questions and see exactly what, uh, what we can come up with. The best source of information on a Detroit gang is often a member of a rival gang. Today, GQ is talking to young men who have just been arrested and who are likely to have gang ties. How you doing, man? If GQ can get them to open up, it could lead them one step closer to the bus stop shooters. How old are you? 18. 18? They call me GQ on the street. What do they call you? I don't know. They just call me a man. Just a Have you called your mom? OK. Uh, what are they claiming that they claiming that you had? She got one. How much? Four bags. Oh, four bags? They brought you in here on some BS like that? Okay. That can be worked out. Uh, you have By appearing problem. sympathetic, GQ uses his personality yeah, to earn guys, trust. Uh, you're, you're, you're and guys, trust you, you can lead to truth. How many How many people are pretty much in the clique? I just hang around like seven people, basically. Do you think that any of those guys will be willing to take a bullet for you? Big T. Big T. He in jail. He's locked up for what? Stealing cars. Stealing cars? Yeah. Who else? My friend Buck. Buck? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me take you back and have. I couldn't get him quite to, to give me the information that I really wanted and I was looking for, but. That's the start. Hey, man, how you doing? The next perp has been arrested in connection with a shooting known as an A1 charge. I understand you have a, a daughter or a son? A son. A son. Junior. Junior. Okay. <laughs> the stick about my shirt, though. I know, man. Me, like I'm saying, I ain't just saying, like, no gang type. We ain't no, no gang type stuff. We well, just, what is like, it? We is just. It? What is it? We family. He's in here on an AWM charge, and I know he just pretty much um, lied to his through his teeth. Like I'm saying, like friends is really closer than your family to people now, because like I said earlier, people don't got family like that. They family deny them to the left. You know, this I mean the world crazy to me. They need a lot of work to the world. I mean, people need jobs. They everybody out here starving. Everybody out here hungry. I miss my family. I've been in here for two days. I miss my daughter. I just want to get out of here. You know, I oftentimes they tell you anything. 
Okay, I'm cold cool with being here. I don't, I'm not, I'm not that person. I'm not. They're out there on the streets murdering, selling dope, and they come in here and they act like a bunch of three-year-olds crying and whining all day long. So you just get used to people lying to you all day. Gang violence is youth violence. Kids in Detroit are often affiliated with a gang before they're even teenagers. Gangs here are younger, smaller, and less organized than in other metro areas. Recently appointed police chief Warren Evans is facing a criminal culture that bears little resemblance to the highly structured street gangs of the West Coast. They're almost like neighborhoods or block gangs. Uh, and so they beef with each other quite a bit. It's not as organized as, as LA gangs or uh, maybe even Chicago gangs. In the 19, late 1970s, the gangs were organized in which you had a structure of one person was in fact like the CEO. Now you don't have that. Uh, in some ways that's good, but in other ways it makes the intelligence gathering more difficult uh, because you have so many small little groups and gangs and trying to figure out the dynamics of who's beefing with who uh, and who the necessary players are. Compounding the challenge is a phenomenon that's taken root in urban culture, not just in Detroit, but across the U.S. It's called Stop Snitching. No one wants to ever be labeled as being a snitch, of talking to the police and giving information about individuals as it relates to committing crimes. Once that gets out, and they say, man, you've been talking to the police about what we're doing on the street, it'll be over for them. They'd rather see the person dead than in jail. The bus stop shooting took place in broad daylight in front of multiple eyewitnesses. Now, pressure from the streets to keep quiet has made what could be quick justice an open case. Detroit's most shocking act of gang violence in recent history, a bus stop shooting that claimed seven victims, has so far surrendered no promising leads. But Gang Squad has a new addition to the intelligence team and his code name is Sandman. Sandman is aggressive, tenacious, very smart. He's very, very uh, valuable because of his street connections there. Sandman is from East Detroit, and the gangs he grew up around are more than just neighbors. They're family. I got a nice little number of people in my family that's in the gang. They don't bring it around me. You know, they know I don't play it. Several of Sandman's cousins belong to a gang known as the Seven Mile Bloods. They're based in eastern Detroit and control a section of turf known as the Red Zone. It's a little more dangerous dealing with a non-traditional gang because they're trying to make a name for themselves. So they're going to always be more dangerous because they feel like, OK, if I do this, it's going to put us on the map. Keeping personal relationships with gang members is a critical part of Sandman's strategy. Those relationships can lead to intel on the bus stop shooting. Hello? Yeah. OK, don't run. You tell them motherfuckers don't run. I'm going to pull up. Hey, I'm going to call this number back as soon as I pull up on the block. I should be pulling up for maybe like five minutes. OK. Here they go down here in the street. The youngest gang member here is only 13 years old. You pretty much stuck in Southwest, you know what I'm saying? Because they like for real blood in, blood out down there. The police, that's what we <laughs> think of. Prison ain't <laughs> shit. What are you talking about? Uh, I know what it is. Seven mile blood gang. Yeah, we this out out of, man. Just tell you all about it. Tell you all about it, man. Free Goon life. Hey, is shoot, oh, man. Man. Is yeah. 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 Hey. Living in the city of Detroit, it's so easy to get caught up in peer pressure and what other people actually think about you. Nobody want to be considered to be soft. You know, my father was a very uh, good disciplinarian. 
I think if it had not been for him, I probably would have you know, succumbed to the streets. Most of my friends, they didn't make it. And, you know, sometimes you have to think that uh, some kids in these neighborhoods, they never get a chance to, to get out of the neighborhood. It's just getting, you know, worse each year. And everybody has a mind of their own. So if somebody feel like they want to be in the gang and go kill somebody to get recognized, that's what they're going to do no matter who tries to stop. See murder, bitch. Bang, bang. It's real. If you ask them, what do you plan on accomplishing out of the game? They, they don't know. A lot of them don't. And that's the crazy part about it. A lot of them don't even know. And I wonder how many, if you, if you ask them, like, so did you grow up in this neighborhood? That's going to honestly tell the truth. They ain't even renting over here, let alone own something over here. They, they broke. They ain't got no money. If I'm going to be in the gang, it's going to be for a purpose. We finna get rich. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be the, the millionaire club or something. It's not going to be no just to fight. That's crazy. In the case of the bus stop shooting, GQ and Sandman's talents are beginning to pay dividends. The gang responsible for the shooting is now believed to be a crew known as the Joy Road Hit Squad, one of Detroit's oldest and most violent gangs. This gang is responsible for a number of different shootings, armed robberies, carjackings. Hello, how you doing? It's me again. I'm back, dog. From the back, you still pushing that crack hard. I'm from the hood in case you didn't know what's exiting me. Where them boys may be waiting. They're involved in the drug trade. So, uh, yeah, clearly the gang is, is a violent group of individuals. The Hit Squad controls territory in northwest Detroit that extends from Joy Road to West Chicago Street and as far west as Southfield Freeway, where the bus stop shooting occurred. Police believe the hit was motivated by revenge against a rival gang member. What's more, eyewitnesses have identified two primary suspects. We don't have an arrest warrant for anybody, obviously, and, uh, but there's certainly people that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're focusing on. And these individuals are, are, are younger, you know, 19, 20 years old, and represent part of the hit squad. Their number one person of interest is Demetrius Hinton, a teen who's also wanted in connection with a more recent drug-related homicide. Hinton is still at large. Now, it's up to GQ and Sandman to locate the suspects before the trail runs cold. Yeah, at 5 o'clock. OK. Behind an abandoned warehouse, where he can be certain of secrecy, GQ meets with an informant who has ties to the Joy Road hit squad. GQ's line of questioning is simple. Where is Demetrius Hinton? The motherfucker is public enemy number one in Detroit as far as we're concerned. The shooters are. And uh, we're not going to uh, let up until we turn over every rock to find the guy. Where do you think that he would go? Where is a 15, where would a 15, 16 year old go? Somewhere with some family. It has to be somewhere with some family. Wyoming. The source oh, delivers and yeah. gives GQ yeah. the latest yeah. intel on the hit squad and the whereabouts of their prime suspect. From meetups like this one, Gang Squad is able to come up with a location on Demetrius Hinton. Demetrius Hinton, we just found out, he's been in Minnesota for the last four days. So he's down there rolling, selling dope. Uh, source don't know exactly where in Minnesota, but uh, apparently that the kid used to uh, roll for the source, so. Any other units know about this uh, source? No, uh, I just got it uh, today in the last 30 minutes. He is aware that we live for him. I, I don't sure. even think so. I don't even think he knows. No, That's why he says come out. I do have his associates here. This is his right hand man. The uh, they're not involved, right? Not involved, but they're part of the probably hit squad, no. so. Oh, yeah. 
do a full workup on each and every one of them, meaning we know all of their associates and also family members, girlfriends, and stuff like that, uh, just in case, uh, you know, they try to get in touch with each other, which is probably going to happen. That's right. Uh, That's anyway. right. It's a waiting game. And as soon as the suspects surface, the squad will be ready to strike. Oh, 0700 hours. Before rolling out for patrol, gang squad street teams enjoy a time-honored tradition. It don't do no good, though, I'm telling you. Don't mind if I do. Watch this. <laughs> This is how we uphold our image. I'm gonna uphold it today. Delicious, number one. Today, officers Shooter and Pelly are on school patrol, part of Detroit's effort to combat gang crime at the source. In Detroit, gang affiliation starts young, as early as nine years old. And the schools themselves are a gathering place for multiple and sometimes warring gangs. Maintaining high visibility in the schools is now a police priority. We're basically the parents. I have to get them in line, let them know I'm in charge, something a parent should do, and at the same time, arrest them if necessary. And if I can, send them home and once they go home, we don't know what they face. After school, kids often make their way home through rival gang territory. A high risk time for shootings. This is when Gang Squad does most of its patrolling. Hey, them big fella. Sort of doing two things at once. One, we're trying to look out for the kids and make sure they all get out, make it home safely and everything. But at the same time, we're hunting. Come here, man. Take your hands out of your pocket. You, you got your ID? What's the last two classes you have? English. It's obvious you don't speak too well. I'm in charge out here. Goodbye. Go that way. And because of their relationship and I think the love that they actually have for kids, they're happy to go do it. I mean, at the end of the day, they want to see kids safe. Do they arrest a lot of kids with guns? Absolutely. Is it the focus of what they do to create criminal records for kids? Absolutely not. Uh, it's to make sure the environment's safe. And I've seen them do just as much counseling, quite frankly, as I have seen them gun chasing. You gonna say, oh, I'm tired of getting tickets, y'all give me tickets. You don't have a license. Uh, no. You ain't never had a license, you're and 16. Would, so if you're tired of getting, getting tickets, why did you stop driving? A lot of times what we tell them goes right out the window when they get home because they have to deal with their home life. He may see us for, what, an hour or two a day? Once he leaves, he has no longer any dealings with us. He's gonna go by what is taught to him at home. Gang Squad puts an intensive focus on getting guns off the street, sometimes at a rate of three a day for a patrol team. But there are thousands of unlicensed firearms on the streets of Detroit. And the statistics are symptomatic of a much larger social problem. Kids in Detroit are often first introduced to gun culture at the toy store. That's a toy. Uh, normally, they carry those in the uh, uh, the service stations around the city of Detroit. All right, we're going to show you the real weapon next to the fake weapon. And as you can see, almost identical. Younger kids, you know, 8, 9, and 10, they'll get these toys and stuff like that uh, innocently, OK? Uh, not thinking that anything is wrong and stuff like that. Inadvertently, sometimes they'll carry them to school in their backpacks and stuff like that. It's a problem not only for schools, but for law enforcement. Um, I cannot tell whether or not a weapon like this is actually real or not. And uh, in a split second or two that you're going to have to determine that fact, uh, somebody can easily get killed. When I was a kid uh, and you had disputes, you'd have a fight and it was over with. Now the fights are well, one group shoots the other group, and then when they heal, they come back and shoot the other group. And it's kind of an ongoing, lethal process. And people don't fist fight. They shoot. If you get in an altercation and you beat me today, I'll come back with a gun. This time I won't lose. And that's the mentality of it, Lincoln. As violent as the gangs of Detroit are, 
their activities are hardly limited to turf wars. The sale of street drugs is a gang's primary source of capital. And for Gang Squad, following the drugs is often the best way to infiltrate. From his sources on the street, GQ has learned that the Joy Road Hit Squad, the gang believed to be responsible for the bus stop shooting, has partnered with another gang to sell narcotics. And that's not uncommon for gang members to sell controlled substances out of one house. GQ's anonymous source has also provided intel on the precise location of the dope house. I'm gonna take it to a nice little gay spot where, you know, they gamble, sell drugs out of guns. It's a lot of gang activity. To investigate further, GQ and Sandman are teaming up for an undercover stakeout. In civilian clothes, they're on their way to the territory of a gang known as BCB. GQ leads the way and Sandman follows behind in an unmarked van with our camera crew. Going into the area of uh, BCB, which stands for uh, Burgess Chapel and Bentley. This little gang that's right up here. The way this truck sound, we might not go far. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little rough and rugged around the edges. I understand that you have to have guidelines to keep certain people in order, but you can't be perfect trying to control an imperfect world. You know what I'm saying? But it's a whole lot of motherfuckers out here. You know, that's how you get their attention. The guy that you're trying to restrain, he's trying to knock your head off. So at some point, you can no longer just keep trying to restrain him. You might have to knock his head off to restrain him. And that's what a lot of the citizens don't understand. And, and those, the citizens that do complain a lot, they wouldn't even come out here and do this job if you paid them twice what I get paid. Okay, two Okay. We're gonna go around here and see what they got going on right here. Can you see these guys right here? I don't believe he put me right here at the damn door. But, uh... Gee, I don't believe you put me this close, man. I'm like, I might as well go on that porch with him. GQ and Sandman are now parked directly in front of a multi-gang stronghold. Being identified as cops could put an end to their investigation and possibly turn deadly. For the rest of the operation, our cameras will stay concealed in the rear of the undercover van. Now let's see what this clown does. Look like a marijuana smoker, you do. You see his left hand, see how it's clenched? Like you got some money rolled up yeah. in it. <laughs> see what he does. Yep. Gotta go give me a bag yeah. of You see, you can always tell about the buyers. There's dope house protocol. And you want to have your money in hand, ready. They might try to shut down, you know what I'm saying? A van just pull up, ain't nobody get out. So I'm gonna go act like I'm being a, uh, interested in the house. All right. To get a closer look, they'll pose as real estate agents looking at property. And no matter what happens, stay in character. How long has that house been vacant? Been all right? My man. Yeah, we are here trying, trying to get a little uh, move on, uh, man, and uh, uh, try to see if we can get these uh, cribs like motherfucking but. They're checking out some houses right now. We can uh, buy them off for about what? 12, 1500? Oh, straight up? Yeah, that ain't a bad little motherfucker. Look like, right like somebody been sleeping in that motherfucker, though. Yeah. yeah. Who, 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 who he said he knows about Oh, he said, man, that ain't even worth buying. He <laughs> said that motherfucker fucked up. He said, I think he said it been, it been vacant for a couple of months. Yeah, that's really what all we really needed. Um, he smelled like the yeah, reek with uh, marijuana. That's really all we need to get a warrant. While casing the dope house, GQ is approached by a young man in the street, wanting to know why they're there. And it turns out to be a breakthrough connection. They were watching me, and they wanted to get a closer look to see who exactly we were. And just by chance, the guy, uh, I recognize him being in one of the photos associated with the suspect in the uh, bus stop shooting. I was so That's one of the target guys, associates of the guy that we're, that we're looking for for murder. 
GQ and Sandman could take the suspect in for questioning, but that would blow their cover and alert the gang that they're being watched. Instead, they'll use what they've learned to get a warrant and penetrate further. The three individuals that uh, we encounter, they all reeked of marijuana. That, plus IDing a person linked to the bus stop shooting, is probable cause. As you can see, they're young, they're young guys, late teens to uh, early to mid 20s, just as described by the source. So that should be enough. With, with no idea that we're the police. Shaking hands with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> I got enough probable cause to get a warrant. We have 48 hours to execute it. Officer for Detroit Police Department Gang Squad Unit, I have a probable cause a search warrant. I don't like to wait to execute a search warrant. Uh, so many things can happen within a 48 hour uh, time frame. The probability of the drugs not being there, that's, that's likely. So once I get the information, I really want to uh, run with it. At Detroit Gang Squad headquarters, GQ phones the DA's office to get permission to process a warrant. After getting the all clear, he types up a summary of his probable cause and takes the paperwork directly to a magistrate for signing. Hey, how you doing, Steve? Hey, listen, uh, we got a source that has some real good information about a certain address. We did some surveillance yesterday, met the target seller. Also, there could be an individual um, that's wanted for murder and eight counts of uh, attempt murder related to that uh, that bus bus stop incident earlier okay. this year. I need to see it in writing. If it's not in writing, it doesn't exist. <laughs> I got it approved um, to the assistant prosecutor this morning over the phone. Swear from the contents of the affidavit in support of the warrant. I do. Guys, be safe. We appreciate you. Take care, guys. Oh. Warrant in hand, Gang Squad mobilizes for an immediate raid on the BCB drug house. Ain't a boy out here that can test my game. How would I look letting another man affect my lane? They need to move quickly in order to capitalize on the intel gathered by GQ and Sandman. And they're up against an unknown number of armed gang members. Three times. Showdown. We need a canine unit, though, at some point. What you think? Those puppies don't find nothing. This is our shotgun man, Bam. How you doing? He sent them all to the back. Sent them to me. I shake them down and send them behind me. So suppress anything that comes my way. Once they see this, they, they tend to think twice. And this here is our raid commander, the sergeant, code name sir. Remember when we used to say we wouldn't do this again? <laughs> you believe that? Every time, they bring it back in. Briefing, briefing, come on in. I got a lot of scriptures for you. Uh, Hey, 200 gangsta, look at that. Bust it, suck it, too. It was weak. You tore your pants. You look like a gingerbread cookie. The table was broke, man. What am I supposed to do? We got a van? It was weak. Let's get on with this. Everybody up? Okay, going to do the search warrant. That's going to be a one story. Green wood frame, single family dwelling. It's going to be a black male, 19 to 23 years of age. Wearing a black jogging suit. Possible name of the <laughs> So who I got on the shotgun? I am. All right, rough you shotgun. Who's back up? Shooter. Rep, where you gonna be? Prisoner. All right. This is a house that's being operated by BCB gang members. Bentley, Chapel, and Burgess. You know, they terrorize that neighborhood. They do a lot of robberies. Gonna be guns inside those cars. Gonna be guns on those persons. If we encounter fire coming out, we gonna Take cover, I'll declare the barricade of government. No one fire into the house if you hear shots inside. Clearly defined target. Clearly defined target. You can't see, don't shoot. Don't let your shit down, don't let no That's guards right. down. We going in hot, we going in ready, all right? Everything to me is ready to rock, okay? I got one rule. Y'all come back to this briefing the way y'all left it. 
right? Hold on, we gotta say our prayer. Our uh, prayer first. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the spirit that you have with us, O oh Father. Just carry us, O oh Father. Stay with each and every one of us, O oh Father. Deliver us safely to this location. Deliver us safely back. As your son, Jesus Christ, has laid the footsteps. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that travels with us at this safety time. In Jesus' name, let everyone say it. The squad takes the house with military precision and cuffs everyone found on or near the property. But until the entire house is secure and all guns are found, no one can rest easy. There's multiple people um, inside that house. We found marijuana. It was a constituted felony in possession with intent to deliver. Uh, we found a parole violator, uh, as well as uh, confiscated uh, a few thousand dollars. More important than a drug bust, gang squad may have apprehended a familiar face. This man matches the mugshot of Demetrius Hinton, the primary person of interest in the bus stop shooting case. What up, Edge? Hey, we, we think we might have uh, this uh, Hinton cat in custody. We're, not, we're trying to match him up against the pictures. He look like him, but we still want to make sure. Look exactly like him. Yeah, we want to be sure, though. Yep. But we're hoping that he may be the person involved in the shooting. That's what we're hoping. If it's not him, he That's got a, him. he's a hell of a twin brother. Yeah, he got a heck of a twin. Detroit's gang squad may have just cracked the bus stop shooting case, but they'll need to check fingerprints to determine if they've collared the right man, and it will take forensics to link him to the crime. The suspect is also wanted for a more recent shooting, a homicide in which Detroit police recovered a 9mm handgun. Proving a match between that gun and shell casings recovered from the bus stop shooting will take the case to the next level. We're trying to draw uh, comparisons between the gun and the casings, the gun that was used in the homicide, obviously, and the casings that were left at the scene. Detroit's own ballistics lab was recently shuttered after too many errors were found in its exam results. So it's at the state crime lab that both gun and shell casings undergo rigorous testing to determine a match. So in this case, we were asked to look at several uh, nine millimeter fired cartridge cases and uh, we were given a, a Glock nine millimeter pistol. In this case, we would take test shots from the pistol and uh, make our comparisons uh, to the evidence found at the scene. First, the Glock nine millimeter is fired into a sealed, water-filled test tank. It's a neutral environment that ensures any markings on the bullets or shell casings are from the gun itself. Then, the test rounds can be compared to shell casings recovered from the bus stop using a comparison microscope. When fired, every gun leaves a unique signature on both bullet and casing. These striations are as individual as fingerprints and can be used to determine a certifiable match between guns and the crimes they're used to commit. If the shells found at the bus stop match the gun used in Demetrius Hinton's other alleged homicide, it's strong evidence linking Hinton to the bus stop shooting. But lab results can take days to process, and gang squad will have to wait for the outcome to know if they've got the right man. And they aren't the only ones hoping for justice. You just got home from school, ugly? <laughs> yeah. What y'all do at school today? I did some math and science. You ain't learned nothing? For 17-year-old Tiara Dickerson, the bus stop shooting isn't a newspaper headline or a case to solve. It's a reality she and her family struggle to overcome every day. My first surgery was in my arm. It's a metal pen and screws down here to keep it together, and it's going to be there forever. 
they had to repair about seven different things in my stomach, my intestines. I know, I know that they had to put back together. I was there when it happened. It was crazy. Yeah. It was real sad. Yeah. She was just laying there so little and just, just almost lifeless. A lot of things that I knew always could happen, I never thought it could happen to me. It helped me realize that it can happen to anybody, no matter who you are, how old you are, or where you are. It can happen to anybody at any time. Now, I really don't like to be alone. I don't like the dark, and I don't like to be around as many people that I don't know. And I, I really don't like to stand at a bus stop anymore. You know, you think about your own family, and you think about uh, how a kid who could you know, be doing the right thing, going to school and just standing by a bus stop ends up with uh, uh, the inability to ever have children and, you know, wear a colostomy bag the rest of their life, you know, and, you know, the worst thing they ever did that day was get out of bed and go to school. Tiara is nearing a full recovery, but there are thousands of kids in Detroit who aren't so lucky. What are some of your dreams? For my dreams? To get better. I want to, hopefully I heal up all the way and then graduate high school and go to college, maybe in Florida, or stay here and go to college and become a lawyer, or I'll become a counselor and work with kids. We prayed real hard and it worked, so I'm glad she okay. I don't care making noise. There are over 1,000 shootings in Detroit every year, but the sheer volume of police work doesn't prevent gang squad from taking their work personally or mask the disappointment that can come with bad news. Lab results are in, and the Glock 9mm does not match the shell casings found at the bus stop. And that's not all. The fingerprints of the man in custody don't match those of Demetrius Hinton, the prime suspect. Fingerprints never lie. But hey, you know, we had to dust ourselves off and get right back out, right back on it. And we're doing it very tenaciously, uh, aggressively, trying to find it. And we will find it. It does make more difficult. It gives you more motivation. You know, sometimes, um, you know, when the caseload gets so extreme, this gives you that extra push, that extra hour. When you were going to go home at, you know, seven o'clock, you decided to go home at eight o'clock. Um, you know, it, it, it gives you more fuel to get these people off the street and to hold them accountable for what they did. We're definitely working on this uh, night and day. Uh, my phone never stops ringing, and uh, I treat each incident. Uh, as if it was somebody in my family, you know, and that's, I think that's what drives me. And for Detroit, a city that struggles to emerge from years of slow economic collapse, and whose young men increasingly look to violence for validation, the future remains a battleground. I can't even say I made a dent. You can't control guns, you can't control what comes into the city, how people get weapons. You can only control a little bit at a time what you can do with the time you're out there. I think my, my future is very, very promising, though. Uh, as, long, as long as the uh, guy keeps me healthy, um, this is a job that I think I was, I've been uh, destined to do. 23 years on the department, and I'm still not burned out. I'm just beginning. Loving every second of the day, making that difference this, not these. Gang squad for life, yeah, I like that. <laughs>